Hey guys, I know I haven't made a video in a while, um, so sorry about that, but happy 2019, guys. I hope you guys are having a great year so far. I know I am. So today is going to be a longer video just because it's a stretching video, and I want you guys to know exactly how long it takes me to stretch every single day, just to show you that it doesn't take that much time out of your day to go ahead and get that stretch that you need in. Stretches will improve your athletic ability and your mobility in general and it's just better for you so you want if you're really big dude with no flexibility you're gonna get hurt if you're super flexible with no muscle you're gonna get hurt so it's important to keep your mu muscle I was trying to think, think of a word for muscle but muscle and flexibility equal you don't want to have a huge gap in between so this is what today's video is for to show you that it only takes about 30 minutes a day to stretch so, get into it. Half straddle with each leg, so you're going to take your front leg here, pull it in toward your hip flexors, keep one leg straight, and you're going to go down. Now all of these stretches you're going to hold for 30 seconds, and during that 30 seconds you're going to slowly progress and progress lower down into your stretch. So. Now, it's important to remember to focus on your breathing while you're stretching, so switch to the other leg. So when you're down in your stretch, you don't want to think about how much that stretch hurts. You want to think about breathing through that stretch to make it to the end of that 30 seconds, because that breathing deep in, deep out is what's going to get you to ignore the uncomfortableness and go deeper in your stretch. You don't want to feel any pain. It should just be uncomfortable. As you can see, my right leg is my bad leg, so that's the one that you're going to do next. And then as you count to 30, you should be trying to go deeper and deeper. So now that you've done your two half straddles, you're going to go to your full straddle. So now that you're in your full straddle, you want to go down to the front, hold that for 30. And same thing here, breathe and continuously try and go down forward. You should feel the stretch right in your hip flexors, so it should be tight, it should not be pain, it should be uncomfortable. Now that you've done your middle straddle, you're going to turn your whole chest over to your non-dominant leg, your, or dominant leg, but I recommend non-dominant first, that way you get the hard part out of the way first, and then you can transfer to the easy part. So you're going to face your whole head and chest to your non-dominant foot, and then you're going to bend all the way down, as far as you can. Hold, 30, breathe, progress down as you go.
Now another important note in your straddle is to make sure that your toes are pointing to the ceiling, not forward, not backward, straight up the whole time. Otherwise you're not going to feel that stretch. Now the stretch I'm showing you right now, when you switch to this leg, is the same stretch on here. These are stretching out your hamstrings, but you're still holding the straddle, so you're still getting that hip flexor stretch. If you're not feeling that hip flexor stretch, go ahead and go as far as you can in your straddle, put your hands behind you, and push forward. Make sure you keep your toes to the ceiling after you push forward. Then you should feel it slightly. You should not have that constant. It should just be slightly pulling. It should not be hurting you. So turn and go down. Alright, so now that you've done that stretch, a good goal to get to in the hamstring stretches is either nose to kneecap or forehead to kneecap. And after that, don't just stop there, keep going. Try to get your chest on your kneecap. Just progress, progress, progress. Because the more flexible you are, the better. Um, you're supposed to balance your flexibility equivalent with your muscles. So you don't want to have too much of either, so a healthy balance means great athletic performance. So go back down in your middle, give your hamstrings a little break because we're going to be stretching them in another 30 seconds. So go down as far as you can in the middle, 30 seconds, go. Make sure those toes are pointing to the ceiling. Alright, now this part is slightly more complicated. So, you're going to take the hand of the leg you're going to bend over. So, I'm going to bend this way. So, I'm taking this hand, putting it down in front of me. A hand opposite of the leg you're going to bend toward, up in the air. Bend sideways and reach over. And make sure you're looking, see if you're on the right track. If you can grab that foot, grab that foot. If you can't, just let your body weight do the work and breathe through it. Now, if you're doing the stretch right, you should feel it all down this side, and that should give you a good side stretch. This stretch is not mainly to stretch your hamstrings, but mainly to stretch your sides out. So, same thing on the other side, hand that you're bending toward in front, hand of the foot that you're bending toward in front, opposite hand up top, and reach over. Breathe through, count to 30. So as you can see, I made the adjustment from forward shoulder to back shoulder because if your shoulders are turned forward, you're not getting that important stretch in your sides. You want to keep those shoulders square. So if you're bending forward just so you can touch your toe, correct it. You want to feel that in your side and a little bit in your hamstrings. Alright, so now to our next stretch. We're going to go into our split stretches. So up on your knees, take your dominant foot, place it forward and
same thing as our hamstring stretches. You're going to try and put your nose on your knee. If you can't, just go as far as you can to where it's uncomfortable but not painful. Alright, good job. Now that you've held that for 30 seconds, you're going to go into your lunge stretch. So, put your back foot up on your toes, lean forward into a lunge. Your toes should be on the ground. Your knees should not be on the floor. So I'm going to turn so you can see what I'm doing. So as you can see, my kneecap is not on the floor. My toes are up and my foot has been placed under my shoulder. Your foot should not be out front. Your foot should not be out behind you. Your foot should be right on your shoulder as well as your kneecap. And you're going to push down in that lunge. You don't want your kneecap touching. Hold for 30 and breathe. job. Now I'm going to turn back, but after you've done your lunge, come back down into right angle, right angle knees. Now this is where it's going to be a harder stretch. You are going to slide down into your split. This toe needs to be pointed and your hips need to stay square. If you're coming over here, you're not doing the stretch right. You want a hand on either side. You want your chest to be square. It doesn't matter how low you get in your split. It just matters that you're doing the stretch. You should feel it right in your hamstring. All right, so hold this for 20, and in the last 10 seconds, you're going to get out on your arms and hold that stretch at its worst point for 10 seconds. Fun part. Alright. Nice job, guys. Alright, so now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite leg. So, put your dominant leg out in front. And if you don't know which leg is your dominant and non-dominant, you'll find out during your half straddle stretch, which is whatever knee you get closest to in your hamstring stretch, that's your dominant leg. So go ahead and go down. Remember, breathe and slowly progress down. Alright, go into your lunge stretch. You should know what that looks like from the last one. Your knee should not be on the floor, toes should be touching the ground, and your knee sh or your foot and knee should be under your pectoral or your chest muscle. Alright, good. Now go ahead and slide down into that split. 
20 normal, 10 with your arms not helping. And down. All right, sweet. So now that we've done our split stretches, we can go down on our knees, make sure your shoulders stay square, or you can go into a crisscross applesauce position, or Indian style, whatever you want to call it. Cross your legs or on your knees, go ahead and keep your chest up, three slow neck rolls on each side. And the other way. All right, if you hear some cracking, it's perfectly normal, and cracking is actually good. All right, so now we're gonna do what's called the frog stretch, or you can call it your on stomach butterfly, or butterfly on the stomach. Basically, you're gonna start with your knees right about here. Let me move back, make sure I'm in frame. So you're gonna start with your knees here. You're gonna go into what looks like a straddle with your knees, and then you're just gonna rock forward on your knees and onto your stomach. It should look like a frog. Now, the closer you get your feet to your butt, the more you're gonna feel the stretch in your hip flexors. Your belly button should be trying to touch the ground, but you should be putting all your body weight or most of your body weight on their knees to force that hip flexor stretch. The closer you get your feet to your butt, the better. Hold for 30, breathe through it. Alright, so to get out of this stretch, simply release your knees, let your feet go out, and then go up. If you try to rock back on your knees, it's going to hurt or it's just not going to work. Alright, so now back to our hamstrings. Go ahead and get into your pike. You can either do toes pointed or toes flexed. I personally, just depends on the day for me. If you are super flexible with your hamstrings, go ahead and lace your fingers in, reach over, and put your hands over. I can't do that, so I'm just going to show you the regular way to do it, which is simply just grab your feet and pull and try to get that face and nose to your knees. Hold for 30, breathe through. Now if you're doing this right, you should feel slight tension in your neck and back because you're pulling on those spinal cords, which is a good thing, so don't get freaked out if your back hurts, it's just a back stretch as well. I'm not going too far in this stretch because my back is super, super stiff, so I just need to give it some time to stretch out. Alrighty, so now if you want to switch the pike and the back stretch around, you can do your back stretch before your pike stretch. That will help with your back flexibility during the pike. All right, so now we're gonna do our ankle stretch, which can be really important, especially if you're doing ninja competitions or if your ankles are just weak and you constantly are rolling your ankle like me. So go ahead and cross, make the number four, so this leg is straight. This leg brings the ankle over top of the kneecap of the other leg. Grab your foot at the ankle and up by the balls and roll. You hear some cracking, it's perfectly fine. So roll about three or four times clockwise, then go counterclockwise. Then you're gonna point your toes, so you grab your toes, pull them, grab your toes this way, pull them this way. 
to the sky, so just rotate your foot so the flat part is up at the sky or the ceiling. And then point your foot at the ground without picking up your kneecap if possible. Then you're going to switch to the other leg. I'll repeat this way so you can see better what I'm doing. You roll. Go the other way. And you're going to point. And you're going to flex. You're going to go up to the ceiling, and then you're going to go down to the floor. As you can see, it's more angled to the floor. It's not straight down to the floor. So that's just, it's just a stretch. It's not meant to break your ankle in half or anything or pick your knee up and smack yourself in the face. It's just a stretch, guys. All right. <clears throat> All right, so next stretch is a back stretch. So I'm going to have to stand up for this one. Hopefully I'm still in frame. Kind of, it works. All right, so you're going to... This is a slow process. So you're going to start up at your head. You're going to slowly bring your chin to your chest. Focus on moving one spinal cord after another. Stop if you feel pain. Let your back catch up. Once that uncomfortableness goes away, progress. Feel it again, stop. Progress. Feel it again, stop. Progress. Do it again. Stop. Breathe through. Regress. Stop. Breathe through it. Focus. And down. Now just hang here for about five to 10 seconds. Remember to keep that chin to your chest. And slow back up. Again, one spinal cord at a time. Last thing to go up should be your neck. Remove your chin from your chest. All right. Now that you've done your back stretches, you can do your legs shoulder width apart this is just another side stretch you're going to have your feet shoulder width apart one arm up and reach over should be another side stretch so keep your shoulders open hold for three breathe through And other side. So now we're going to go ahead and slide into our middle split to get those hip flexors one last time. So your middle split is just what it is. It's a straddle with you standing up. I recommend hands for support so that we don't push too far down. Because <clears throat> this one puts a lot of pressure on your kneecaps, especially if your IT bands are super, super tight. I'll show you a stretch for those at the end. <clears throat> So then just roll to your knees and come back. All right, so now we're going to do our quad stretch. So you're going to have like you're in a pipe. You're going to put one foot 
behind you like this. So your kneecap is in front, your foot's by your buttocks. Then you're going to lean back as far as you can. If you can lay down, that's great. But you don't want to pull your shoulders back like this. You want to pull your elbows out like this when you're leaning back. Go until you feel an uncomfortable moment. Hold it for 30. If you can progress, do so. If you can't, just hold and breathe through. And then do the other side. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do our wrist stretches. So, start with your hands like so. Down in front, and back up, and you're gonna roll. And on our clockwise. So you're down on all fours, you're rolling out your wrists. This is gonna help you if you have carpal tunnel or beginning stages of it, I know it helps me. So once you've done about three or four, go ahead and turn your hands out so your hands should look like this now do the same thing once you've done three or four go ahead and turn your hands again all the way pointed to you if you can this should be a much more feeling stretch because this is the stretch that's going to work on most of your forearms that you actually use All right, then you're gonna go ahead and turn your hands all the way the opposite way, as far as you can. I can almost get mine all the way around. That's because I'm double jointed. <laughs> Once you've done three or four of these, then you're actually going to take your hands and flip them over like this. So these are your knuckles. They're gonna go down on the ground. Now, you want your knees fairly close to your hands when you do this because this part of your hand does not get worked a lot, so it's not as strong as the other side. So, you really don't want to put a whole lot of weight. So just do circles with the light weight applied. You don't want to hurt your wrist. It's a good way it can get sprained, so just be cautious with this stretch. This stretch is going to feel a lot really good. You've done three or four of those, you're done. Now, if you want to do a quick IT stretch, I will show you that real quick. But for the majority, that's my daily stretch routine. I hope you guys enjoyed. So, as soon as I do the IT stretch, I'll wrap it up. And I'm leaving this video raw just to show you how long it takes a day to stretch. Because a lot of people come to me and they're like, well, stretching takes too long. I'm like, it doesn't take that long. You just got to commit to it. All right, so, IT stretch. Starting your bike. Take leg you want to do. Bring it to you. Put that foot on the floor. Turn the opposite way. Put your elbow on that knee and push. You should feel that stretch right in your lower buttocks and that's your IT band getting stretched out. And do the other side, just like all the other stretches.
Now, you've done your IT stretches. So, that is the end of the stretch routine. If you don't know if your IT bands are tight, here's a simple way to tell. Your toes are normal, naturally supposed to be pointed straight. If they are bowed out in any fashion, such as here or way out here, your IT bands are tight. The stretch will help correct that and keep your feet straight. Also, keep a conscious mental note that you need to keep your feet pointed straight. That will help too. I hope you guys enjoyed my daily stretch video. If you did, like, subscribe, share with your friends, guys, because stretching is really important, even though most people don't know it. It has so many benefits. If you don't believe me, go ahead and look it up. So, see you guys. Have a great day.